90% of everyone who is performing electronic music is using our software. But we don't know how the world would be in 2018 without this program. So yes, life had a very Ableton life had a very big impact. But if if we wouldn't have done it, perhaps someone else would have done something very similar. Uh, so it was just something that was in the air. You know, it was there was a time where there was a necessity to write something like this program and we did it. I think it is uh, very important that the, the instruments are affordable for a lot of people and that everyone can do it because this also means that people who have great ideas and not much financial background are able to express themselves. So in, in this regard I, I feel we live in very great times. Uh, also in times where a lot of boundaries are not existing anymore. It is totally fine to be interested in 20th century uh, serious academic music and being interested in club music and um, being interested in Debussy. Uh, that doesn't, it's not a contradiction. <laughs> One thing is very obvious, computer technology gets, gets much better and cheaper and this means people can do far more complex manipulations with, with on the visual side because there's, there's not much technical limitations anymore. So people can create 3D worlds, uh, image manipulations of all kinds of things and also a new generation of people is coming up who grew up with programming and who have much less problems thinking in those structures than maybe my generation. So on a, on a technical level everything is getting really really advanced. The question of course is always what is the, the meaning of things? What, what is the reason why do we do things? And this is something which has nothing to do with technology which this is a question you have to find yourself as an artist and sometimes doing just one stroke is more important than a very complex scenario. But in general, I, f I feel that the, the evolution of audiovisual art is amazing these days. And um, technology allows us to do things which were completely unthinkable. Visual stimulation is, is very dominant and this is why, for instance, I sometimes do concerts where there is no visuals, especially explicitly because I, I want people really only to listen. Uh, and sometimes I don't like the fact that in order to sell music you have to have a video because uh, some music just doesn't need anything else but music. So I, I have mixed emotions about that, but I found my own ways to, to express myself within an audiovisual world. And my, my Lumiere laser project is one way of, of experimenting within this field. Having sound and vision synchronized seems to be so, so obvious. But at the same time, um, reality is, is more complicated because if, if you have thunder and, and lighting, 
it's never synchronized because it's so far away and sound travels so slow. So it's always light sound. Um, but our brain is so, so much looking for synchroni synchronicity. So we find it very satisfying if something visually and something uh, sonically happens at the same time. And this is why uh, it's enjoyable to watch a circle getting bigger and at the same time a sound doing bang. <laughs> and I, I'm exploring this very basic um, stimulation, if you like so, uh, and try to do something artistic with it. And it really started from trying to figure out, for instance, how does a circle sound? How does a square sound? Uh, what can I find rules for that? Can I, can I define my own language that explains this? Because the most important part of every piece of art is it has to have some logic within. It's not necessary that everyone knows what the concept is, but I strongly believe that there needs to be an underlying concept and this radiates through. So my first question for, for my Lumiere work was really, how do things sound? And I made up my own rules for this. And now within these rules, I can actually compose. Mm -hmm. 